I've missed you so much. So, so, it's a long time. Thank you for those that knew where I was and have been praying for us. We went to Sigida in Tanzania. Um, then from there, I think last Sunday I was in uh, Nyanyuki. Uh, and I've just come from Kibwezi uh, last night. Um, I don't know why movement have started. I don't know why it should start now. But anyway, um, as I sang that song this morning, that he is Lord, it reminded me when I gave my life to the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. Wherever I've gone, there were greetings. Greetings from Deliverance Church in Yuki. There were greetings from the bishops and the pastors in Tanzania, and um, there are greetings from Kibwezi and our region of us here, Bishop Muema. Amen. I want to start with a little story so that I can feel comfortable about this place. I have normally told you that this place can be Daza kuja na kaujumbe kali kakifika hapa kanapotelea ugo tu nikiwaangalia kanaenda kaki kaki faint. So a story is told of this woman. She wanted to look for a lawyer who can help her because she wanted some questions she wanted to ask in terms of marriage. So this woman goes to a qualified lawyer in terms of family and she asked the lawyer, is it true that if I divorce my husband, I'll get 50% of all that uh, he has. Now, he has. And the lawyer said, yes. And the woman said, so it is true that today if I divorced him, I'll get half of what he has. And the lawyer said, yes. Bring him. Let's file the divorce. And then the lady said, let me go first and look for a husband. Many times we want things, but we don't, want, we don't want to do nothing about. We want Jesus, but we don't want to repent. So we, we want to allow Jesus to come into our hearts, but repentance is something that we don't want to do. And no wonder we can be Christians who talk about him, who sing about him, who have some language about him, but the miracles that pursue the people that know him and love him, what Daniel says they will do exploit, there is no exploit that can be found within us. And then we wonder why it doesn't happen to us, and yet we love him, we talk about him, we even Christianize ourselves, and we talk those Christian Christianese, as somebody calls them. But it is because in our heart, all what we have done is that we want Jesus to come in, and you know he won't come in because if there is no repentance and purity of heart, Jesus will not come in. So I can talk about him, I can pray to him, but unless I allow him to come into my heart by repentance, there's very little things that are going to happen. I don't know about you. You want to pass an exam, but you must work hard about it. Even if you prayed and fasted, no miracle of passing an exam will happen. Ati nataka kupita kuendesha gari, lakini stay kuendesha gari. Lazima wende pale ruaraka, uingie kwa gari ugurumishe. Alafu, unless unataka uletewe barua, ya bandia kwako. But if you want to be giving a testimony how you pass an exam, you have to go there and do it. And some of us failed many times kuendesha gari. And yet, tukitoka kule tunaendesha. Like for me, I had a matatu, I was driving it from banana, to the city. Nasi kuwa na barua. Nikienda hapa ni naanguka. Baka siku moja karibu ni waulize. Na muna joka ni nakutoka kana yo banana ni nakuja na yo Nairobi. But I wasn't going to be rude. And every time they would push me at, you know, askari anakasirika. Umegonga pavement. Na muuliza wapi. Hata kuendesha gari hataki ni gurumishe. Pale kuendesha kagari kwa board. Unajua ile board. Na ninaona nimeenda vizuri anambia umekanyanga maua. Na anakasirika. Kwa hivyo mara kadhaa nilikuwa ninapiga bodi, mara ninakanyanga maua, mara ninafanya hivyo. But one day, there must be a day that the Lord came. 
for you like he did come for me. I came there with a rosa. But that day, I don't know what happened. The officer decided to end the Barabara Kwanza. I say, Ndiyo aliona dereva kegonyi kweli. Nilipo mtoa tu wapo. Kufika tu utalia. Kanambia kwani we ni dereva. Kambia pana unatakaji officer. Ah, hata we umesha pita sasa. Niende, nipereke. Uko pangani. Nika mpereka pangani. Kubala ansa kuku wa nashida. Kwa hata tukirudi siku perekwa hile meza tena. Kwa sababu nilikuwa naendesha matatu. Kutoka banana. Kuja Nairobi. Na ninasimama ni kibeba raia. Haravu na kuja hapa unahanguka. Hawezi pita mtihani mpaka ufanye nini? Uende ufanyiwe mtihani. But there are people who want things. You want you want you want the joy of the Lord but you don't want to follow him, to pursue him and to desire his ways that God can. The other thing that I've also discovered sometimes you are holding on to something that God has already condemned. You are holding on to something that God has already said he doesn't want it in your life. But yet you are still holding on to it. It is still you are pleading with God. And it is like you want to manipulate him. So that that thing which you, you know he does not want. And he has talked about it to you. That he can change his mind. Because we are coming from the issue of grace. Oh mungu ananipenda sana. Na mungu kama ananipenda. Hawezi ni adhibu hivyo. Mungu ananipenda sana. Na hawezi nifanyia madhara. God loves me so much and everything that I do is going to be perfect. And sometimes we miss it because God is saying something about us and the situation we find ourselves. But because we are holding on to it so much, it's like we don't want to let it go. But I want to speak to us today that when God says it has to die, let it die. Because when you release it to him, then you will move out so that you can move on. Christianity, we have to move on because we cannot settle. God is calling us to move on. And I'm going to use a story that you all know in the Bible. Hallelujah. Just something that you know. Second Samuel 12 verse 20. So David arose from the ground, washed and anointed himself and changed his clothes and went into the house of the Lord and worshipped. Then he went to his own house and when he requested, they set food before him and he ate. The, the sequence is, and David rose from the ground. Of late, I have been using two things that I, I thought they are very, very powerful. Is a story that I gave here of this girl that was telling the parents, that telling the mother as they were weeding the flowers. The mother said, the girl told the mother, mother, Mom, I know why this flower is that beautiful. And then the mother is asking, how do you know it? He said, because this flower was there before it came up, but it refused to be in the soil. So it pushed, it pushed its potential and came through the leaves. And now we can see a beautiful flower out there. The mother got a revelation in it. You look at a flower sometimes before it burns, you don't know how it is going to look like. But the little girl also said this. I also know why it dies. After some times, the flower longs to go back to where it came from. So it has to wither and go back to the ground. But it is in between which is more critical for me. Because one day I'll go back to the ground where I come from. But I want to be the flower with a, sm with a smell that can pull others. That can be an excitement, can encourage others. That is the period between when I blossom and when I will wither out. Praise the name of the Lord. So a couple of things that are happening here. David is putting on a garment of praise. And he is going to the house of the Lord. He is not... He is not going home fast. He is putting the garment of praise and he is going to the house of the Lord. Now it is good to know what happened then because there is something that happened to, to, to David and that's what I want to talk about him. If you, if you look at 2 Samuel chapter 11, it, it is the story of Nathan who goes to, uh, to, to, to David uh, to, 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 to talk to him. It is because in chapter 11, David has already fallen into sin. David 
has already fallen into sin. And because he falls into sin, the servant of the Lord is sent to him so that he can help him, sort him out. And when he comes to him, Nathan gives him a parable. In chapter 12, verse 1, he comes to David and he gives David a, a story. He says there were two men in one city, one rich and the other poor. The rich man had exceedingly many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing except one little evil lamp which he had bought and nourished. And it grew up together with him and with his children. It ate of his own food and drank from his own cup and lay in his bosom, and it was like a daughter to him. And he continues to say that one day a traveler is traveling and he goes to the rich man, and the rich man who has all flocks, he decides to slaughter something for him. And he goes to the poor man's uh, evil lamb and he brings it to, uh, he, he eats it. So David, when he thought this story, he gets annoyed. He says that person should die. Now listen, he is the one who is putting a judgment. That person is ought to die. That's what he says. That person ought to die. With anger of a king, then Nathan says, Oh, and you are the man. Now that man ought to die. Meaning, David, you ought to die. But Nathan continues to say and tells David, Now, David, God is so merciful. As far as he is concerned, you will not die. You are the man, but you won't die. But the child that is going, it, you are holding here will have to die. Now David, because of the mercy of God, because of the grace of God, because he, he was pardoned by God, now he wants to manipulate God and hold the a prayer fest for seven days. He is praying and fasting. When I read this verse, I discovered there are some demons and powers that will not go out even if you prayed and fasted until you do what God has told you to do. It is not just praying and fasting. No, 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 no. It is hearing what God is saying so that as I pray and fast, I'm praying in agreement with God has told me he is going to do. So I want to look at that story. And share two thoughts, or one or two thoughts, and then I'll be done. The life of David, a great military man. He has victories, but also he has painful personal defeat. He was the man after God's own heart. He was the sweet singer of Israel. He was the man that pleased God. He was the leader of God's people. David was anointed with the oil, listen, of the presence and the power of God. Presence and the power of God. David, he was gifted by God to battle for Israel's enemy. He, he's used that gift that God gave him to destroy the Philistines because he had the presence and the power of God. He used that gift that God has given him of the presence and the power of God to fight Israel's enemy. He used that gift to destroy the Philistines. You know what? He had left the headless corpse of a Goliath in Ella Valley when he was just a teenager, a little boy carrying a big head. He celebrated great victories. Yet he also endured some great failures brought on by his uncontrollable desire for lust of passion and quick temperament. I'm talking to men and women that if you don't control your temperament, if you don't control your lust for lust, if you don't control them, they'll bring you down. They'll bring you down. In other words, strength of character, moral purity, turns around and becomes troublesome to David's walk with God. Because you see, character itself and desiring purity by itself. If you don't add the grace of God and hearing the voice of God, those things can also put you down. They can be trouble to you. At times, his pursuit for God is so moving as we hear him sing about many melodious uh, psalms. At times, he is so genuine and he falls down heartfelt to worship. But other times, David is asking what David, we could ask him, 
What were you thinking? We could ask David, what were you thinking when you did this? What were you thinking? In time, this man is carrying the big head. And as he carries the big head, he doesn't realize that the big head that he was carrying out there of his enemy is no longer the big head of his enemy. It's his big head. You know, sometimes we have victories over there and we are carrying the victories over there. But sometimes we don't know. The burden is not longer over there anymore, but you are carrying your own head and you need to deal with your own head. You need to deal with your own situation. The enemy within created a disastrous circumstance that brought the great king from the throne of power to pit for a place where he was on the ground crying and mourning. He was in misery. He was in shame. And he was very, very remorseful. This great king, a king that had won battles. And Nathan comes to him and he tells him, it is like he's trying to remind him, you know, the wages of sin, when they strike home, the penalty of death is realized. In that sober moment, at the throne of King David, Nathan says, you are the man. David was told that the child will not leave. That news drove him to his knees. He began to fast and pray for the Lord to reverse the curse and allow the child to leave. David, the great king, was devastated. David, completely stripped of all his ability to cope with the fact that he not only was adulterous, he was also a thief, but also he was a murderer. Sin will always take you farther than you want to go. I said when I started, we want Jesus to come into our heart, but we don't want to repent. We want the things that God does, but we, want to walk, we don't want to walk in his ways. Oh, we want to do all that we can do that other Christians do. We want to do all that. We want to, to, people to see us, but we don't know it is not what people see because God looks at my heart. He wants to have to see my heart. Hallelujah. So the, script, the scriptures informs us that David knows about God's mercy. He also knows his gracious, loving kindness because he had experienced it before. His life has been blessed with grace and mercy mainly because he repented. And I want you to remember why David's life is having that smoothness is because of the word repenting and turning away from the sinful nature and the sinful things that were happening to him. Yes, mercy, he, because he repented so well. But this time, mercy and loving kindness won't come. And day after day, the child grew worse, and David continues to lay on the ground in misery and shame. You see, David is still, but he is not repenting. All what he's trying to plead is God to have mercy on the child instead of saying, I am a daughteress, I am a thief, and I am a murderer. Oh, the church is so quiet today. But I'm saying we want Jesus but we don't want to repent. We want Jesus, but we want to live the life that you live. You know, some, some of us here and they are listening to me, and please forgive me today, I want to speak to you. How can you, how can you live with a girl in your own house? You are not married. You still want Jesus to bless that reunion. And then one day you come and tell me, Bishop, Bishop, I, I want to get married. Then I ask, what is marriage? Kwani marriage ni upe? It's not the white dress that you wear. Oh, I say. You want to live drunkard all the life. You want to be a drunkard, but Sunday morning you want to wear your best and come to church and say, hallelujah, praise the King Jesus. I'm talking about if God is going to do anything for you. Can I speak to you? Can I be your pastor today? There is room for repentance and allow Jesus to come in. Not Jesus and sin, but it is Jesus and Jesus alone. Hiya. The scripture then tells us, this man knew the loving kindness, but at this time, because he never repented day after day, the child is getting worse and he's still praying, but he doesn't know. All what God wants him to do is to repent, 
But the judgment of the child has always been put. It is not, you cannot purify, you cannot justify. And we normally say, go to the parents of that girl, come to church, kind of go to Sharia house, legalize your marriage. Don't live like that. Because Akuta Anguka, hey, Saruji Anguke, remember David, the giant killer, the warrior king, now lies motionless, where? On the floor. With all his followers looking on him. Job, the commander of the army, knows what he did. The mighty men that were with Uriah, they know what David did. The community around, they know what David did. And he is now where? In the temple doing what? Praying that God will come and have mercy of the child. But refusing to repent so that God can cleanse him and give him new life. If there is going to be new life and hope in my life, I have to enjoy repenting. I know some of us, when we, you repent, you know, do you know, do you know one of, one of, one of, one of the, the truth about Christian walk? Nimdomoyako ijifundishe kutubu. Wengine kutubu ni humiliation. Lakini ijifundishe kutubu. Saa shida nyingine ya watu wengine tukitubu baka unaambio you are becoming so and you don't you are not supposed to speak the whole truth but repentance is speaking the whole truth I used to enjoy and really get blessed by the tukutendresa brethren because in their meetings repentance was the theme and every one of them will repent something. Some of them will repent something like this. Shetani aliingia kwangu asubui hi. Na alikuja akapitia kwa kikombe ya chai. Anatubu. So unaweza shiru kikombe ya chai labda. Labda ni mama alipatia mzee chai. Majani ya hikuwa imeingia vizuri. Shetani akaingia pale. Lazima atubu. Na wengine hapa shetani aliingia kwa kikombe ya chai asubuhi hii lakini kutubu huwezi tubu mpaka <laughs> nice dog some of you might not understand that nice dog ukienda kwa wazungu na hata umbwa awe very ugly umbwa kwa nyumba ukisema ni ugly <laughs> hata chai utapewa kwa hiyo nyumba so what do you do Nice dog. Hata kama unaogopa isiku ume. Oh, I like your nice dog. Nasa hiyo mdomo imefuguka hivi. Baka inatoka maate, unashindwa. Nice dog. And I know a friend, waliko sana na buwana yake. Kwa sababu, walipo tembea mahali, alishindwa kusema nice dog. Buwana na muangalia aseme, na hawezi sema. Sawa wakienda wanakuoro. Wewe tukienda tena. Ujifundishe kusema nice. Na anasema nitasema nice na mnagani na si nice. So repentance is really owning up. It has happened. Own it up. Don't fast and pray. Own it up. Repent. David, a giant killer, warrior king. He is there motionless on the floor. With all the people around him, the general knows, the mighty men know, the people on the street know, homes know about it. The sin that was committed in secret has become public and the heady, prideful leader is now so mesmerized by the circumstances surrounding his sinful action. They render him paralyzed. He is miserable. He is emotionally destroyed. He is on the ground, but he still wants God to come and cause it to happen. Because if that child came back to life, David would not have repented. How great king has fallen. David had fallen then. However, there are many instances in the Bible of people praying for babies. And God is so gracious. Sarah prayed for a baby when she was very old. And God gave her a baby. Rachel prayed for a baby. And the Lord gave Rachel Joseph. Jacobed prayed for a baby. 
And the Lord gave Moses to Jacobed. Hannah, pray for a baby. And Hannah was given Samuel. But 2 Samuel 12, 18, David prays day after day for seven days. He's trying his best to beseech God to change his mind and let the child live. But deep in his heart, he knows that God is love, but he is also God of judgment. He knows that God can bring judgment. You see, it is hard to pray, and I hope you hear what I'm saying. It is hard to pray for something to live that God has decided for it to die. And you know, some of us in this house are trying your best to save something that God has decided to kill in your life. I told you I want to be your pastor today. I don't know why you are bothered with that relationship that died. You still pray for it to come back. Let it go. If God wants to bring it back, he will. If it is dead, let it die. Have a, a funeral service. Itakufanya usononeke bure. Hiyo kazi ulifutwa. Wacha yende. Kama buwana atakuregeshia muachie mungu siyo wewe. Wewe ya muka. Vanguo za sifa. Enda hekaluni. Usipita kwa nyumba kwanza. I'm talking to you because I want to be your pastor. I want to help you. Oh, alienda ulaya, lakini atarudi. Muache ende. I say. Ati unajua hile proti hidikuwa yetu. Wali tudeanganya. Sasa hauta nunua ingine. Wacha yende. If God has condemned it, release it. Aya. Watu wa mungu tupo. Yes, if God wants to kill it. Some of you are praying, God, keep it alive. And God says, no, I'm trying to kill it. Release it. Whoa. Where bishop uelewi vile tulipendana, eh, sielewi. Lakini mungu wanasama achilia ife. Aya. It is when you allow it to die. Because you see even the Bible says, unless that seed dies. Now some of us want to keep the seed and you want to have a harvest. Unaangalia maindi, unaipanguza, unaipanguza, unasema hallelujah. Hii maindi bado itakuwa. Na uikubalie, ingie kwa matope, na ikufe. Na sisi wengine lazima huu mwili. Tuukubalie, uingie kwa matope, na ufe. Some of us have plans and thoughts that we are trying our best to keep our life. And yet God is saying, let them die. And you have become so weary and frustrated because you can't make it happen. You won't let God terminate that attitude and kill that plan and bury those thoughts. But you are still holding on to them. Release them. Have a funeral party today. If God says it should die, let it die. There are people here that today, this is the day that you're going to do a memorial service over some of those things and your life will never be the same again. Wacha ile ya kusema, ile ya kikweli. You know, there is, there, kuna ile tunasemanga kwa sababu kila mutu wanasema yo Christianese. But I'm saying wewe mwenyewe. Maisha yako ya badile kabisa kwa sababu wewe mwenyewe utakuwa na memorial service. Wewe mwenyewe. Kama amesema ife, achilia. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. My advice is to kill what needs to be killed. Let him take out of your life those things that were conceived during a time of sin and spiritual rebellion. If anything happened during the time you are a sinner in rebellion, allow it to die. We are your pastor wako. Utasumbuka. Utasikia yesu wa meonekana hapa kwa roundabout. Utakimbia kwa mujiza pale. They will manipulate you. Watachukua hela zako suju 310. Utasumbuka bure. But all what God is calling you to do. It's repentance. Allow Jesus to come in. And what he destroys. And what he tells you kill. Allow it to die. 
allow it to die. Stop asking God to bless those things that he has already said they are not good. You got them and you conceived them in sin. Don't keep those things alive. They are connected to the wilderness experience in your life. Release them. When we go to the encounter, you, when you leave the encounter, you go home and destroy all the, dis the, 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 the flash disks of the music that you used to carry, the, the pornographic books that you used to look at. You destroy them. And then after you destroy them, after a couple of weeks, you then you go again, fetch them. Because you know they're in the internet. If God wants to kill them, have a party to destroy them. We used to sing a song, and some of you remember them. The things I used to do, I don't do them anymore. The places I used to go, I don't go to those places again. It has to be you. You need to have a funeral service. Those things that came during your wilderness experience, you have to destroy them in the name of the Lord. Could I submit to you, believers, Christians that are here, and you that are not born again, that walk of Christ is accompanied with the difficulties and struggles that will knock you to your knees. That along with the positive and productive things your Christian walk and family will bring, there will be devastating blows that will threaten your spirituality, your mentality, your, your, your physical and emotional. It is a fact all great men and women who have done extraordinary things for God in the kingdom have suffered through some mess and sluggered it out with the diversity and enemies of faith or mission or vision. Sometimes Christians will wonder in the present difficult, is the present difficult really God or mine? Should I release it? Should I not? But it might be at those times we may be trying to keep something that God is trying to kill. Am I sp speaking to someone? Maybe you should be wondering now. You should be thinking. Iyo kamote umekuwa nayo na iyo hirizi umekuwa umeibeba na hizo vitu umekuwa umeibeba. Ni wakati wakuzichoma. Zime kuzuia usivai nguo ya sifa. Usiingie katika hekaluni. Umwabudu buwana bila unafiki. Amen. And you know it could be what? There are things that God used. You are still holding on to them and yet you ought now to destroy them. For example, the children of Israel. In the book of Numbers chapter 10, they had what, what we would call the serpent of brands. Na utaona wa kristo hata hapa duniani sahi. Kuna wengine wanataka kubeba kitu hiko na nyoka. Iri ya kiumwa, ayangalie. Haifanyi kazi. Wachana na ayo. Hata hiyo msalaba wacha kubeba. Beba msalaba wa Yesu. Siu hii miyambao. Don't worship this. Have one in your heart. Ata Musa, alipotoka kumuona mungu. Si alipata glory kwa uso wake. Watu hawakutaka kumuona. Wakamambia afunike nini? Uso. Wakulino. Na wakafunika uso. Na hakuna glory ni nyuele wamefunika. And you can have those things and live with them. And yet God says the time is up. What was there was a symbol for what Jesus came to do. Now look to Jesus and live. There are things that will have to die. Because God used a certain method to answer prayer and bring deliverance, we want to hold on to that and keep it with us. Because God moved in a certain way in the 70s, we want to hold on to that and keep it alive. We want to make a monument out of it. We want even to worship it. Remember what Jesus is saying. Lord, if you ask me, take this cup away from me. But Jesus remembers, no, 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 no. It's not me, it is his will 
So your perfect will be done, he says. Paul has a thorn in the flesh. He's praying for God to deliver him from it. But God says, this one I will keep. I'm talking to you because I also want to tell you there are things at a wombe, at a ufunge, hiyo alama amekupa itaka. Hiyo alama itaka kama ya pauli. And yet, these are the same men called David. He's a man that you gave him Goliath. He will kill him. Why? Because he's a man after God's own heart. He will kill Goliath. But when Belshiba shows up, he will shrink. He will go to the ground. Now, if I know that is myself, then what ought I to do is to make sure that I deal with my eyes, the last of the eye, and the last of the flesh. I will deal with them. If you give David an enemy, he will crush him. But you give David pride to bring him down. Give David a problem, he will solve it. But the greatest enemy of David is not there. It is inside him. And I'm talking to you to tell you, your greatest enemy is not there. Kuna wimbo unasema, shetani anavipembe. Ni kuambia shetani hakuwa gina pembe. Maandiko inasema shetani ni malaika wanuru. Kwa hivyo, ukitafuta anamapembe. Hiyo ni ya kukustua wewe. Hiyo ni heaven's gate, hell's flame. Hiyo. Diyo anakuwa kana mapembe. Lakini shetani, hai. Siyat aluga nzuri, amajipiga marashi, na ondorono, amepiga kiatu yake rangi, amevaa suti, eh? kucha amepaka rangi mzuri, wale wanapakaka kwa kucha. Hana mapembe, hana moto unato. Kwa sababu kweli kabisa tuseme, Let, let's just agree. Shetani akija pale ama mtu akiingia pale na pembe na moto unatoka kwa mdomo tutafanya nini tutatoroka ile ujaona hata ile ukuta tutaruka kweli rongo lakini shetani atakuja kama wewe na kama mimi mnakaa naye polepole ugurudi kuangalia kumbe alikuwa shetani acha kurarua shetani atiana mapembe But I also want to say this because I'm speaking to my people today. Mimi nazungumzia wa shirika wangu leo. Si hubiri watu ambao si wajui na hubiri wa na nina kuona. Hata wewe. Na kucheki. Eh, hata wewe. Labda unajua nina kunu eh. Usi unajua nina kunu kidogo. Kiasi. Basi ni wewe. You see, another problem that why we don't get to what God is trying to do is because we want to do it like others. So we listen to what people out there are saying about me. And you know, whether it is positive or not, I should not dwell on rumors. I should not dwell on suspicion. I shall deal with rumors and suspicion because once I do that, I will become like David. When he discovered they were talking about themselves, he knew the child is dead. So when you hear the rumors there, no God is coming. Kurudi kwake kumekaribia. Those people are talking and criticizing you and your God is because the coming of the Lord is near. Oh, I was speaking with another lady yesterday and she tells me she has calculated when Jesus is coming back. And I thought, what a way. She said, Jesus is coming back. Because from 1948, all what you need is to add 70. Which means, alikuwa aje 2018. Chidiyo 70. Ama niye sabo ya guinada vibaya. But that woman is wise. He says, is either 70 or 80. Or if you are stronger, up to 120. So, that's what we want to say. Hivi. Haku kuja 2018. Anaweza kuja 2020 
eight, ama twenty thirty eight, ama twenty forty eight, ama twenty fifty eight. Basi ni kamambia, we unakubaliana na yeso, hujui kurudi kwake. Anaweza kuja wakati wo wo. My prayer is that we will be alert. Because Jesus is coming again and is coming for us that are pure in the heart. Yes, people were saying things about David. But David knew he has to wake up from where he was. So, Whatever they are talking about you, whatever they are saying about you, David at that point, he knew he had reached to the ground. He was the talk of the town. Job knew it. The, the men of war knew it. The street people know, knew it. He has taken Belsheba in. He, they knew it. They were talking about it. Even his people were in the groups. But that day on the seventh day, he looked at their lips and he saw what they were saying. And you know what? Hey, I love this story. I love this story of this lady that was beautiful. And I, sometimes I ask, Kwani beautiful ni nini? Because my wife is the most beautiful lady in this church. Amen. You ask Kaunda, the most beautiful woman in this church. Atakuwa nani? Millicent. Ukiuliza Dan, the most beautiful woman up and inani. Rosemary. Ukiuliza Nzuki, the most beautiful woman hapa, anaitwa Eunice. Kwa hivyo, beauty is to the beholder. But anyway, the story is told that she was beautiful. But she was beautiful because people walitaka kucheza na ya muziki. Na siyo muziki ambao ni muziki wakisasa. Ni mtu wako na bottle ya, koka, ya, ya, ya Fanta. Unajua ya Fanta diyo yakuwa na round. Ni ili ya napiga na mungine yako na ma... Na, na marebe ya napiga, ya napiga. Arafu kuna mungine yako na kagita hapo ya na ham. Nizo za kwetu. Ama kenada kia. Ile kenada ya nini ya kufuruta. Arafu unaiba mere na kuna. Sasa hiyo ni mere na kuna ni nini. Ata vijana wako hapa mere na kuna unajua ni nini. But anyway the story is told. This girl was the beauty of the village. And everyone wanted to dance with her. And there was a crippled guy. And this guy also wanted to dance with her, but she would not allow. She imbi na watu sura kama yako. You know, that kind of a talk. But then one day, this, uh, this crippled boy, alikuwa amepiga kadutura vizuri. Alikuwa nakachoma vizuri. You know, do you know, Unaweza chomewa maindi na mtu, ufikiria ina utamu kuliko ile yako. Kwa vile naipindua, na kuipanguza panguza, na ipindua. Ah, nyinyi watu ya hapa, munapenda kununua maindi nusu. Si muende huku kwetu, inauzago ikiwa mzima, hawakatagi. Sao unaona mama na pindua pole pole pale kakambega kwa soko. Pole pole, mpaka unasumamisha gali pale mbele unarudi. Ili uone kama hiko hivyo, ama hapa kwetu kenari. Una? Unaona ni kama ni tamu kuliko zile zingine nunua tu ndio nakuta ingine ni ngumu kwa sababu ilianza kuchomwa asubuhi wamekuwa kiweka kwa moto tu wewe whatever sasa kaka kijana kana kana pindua ndutura vizuri pole pole huyu mama naye alikuwa na njaa huyu msichana mzuri si akaomba basi kijana akampa hiyo friday dance dance hizo wakati mwingine zilikuwa zikimbwa friday wala mnakumbuka friday Kwa sababu zata dea kuna kazi Friday. Tio nwanda kwa, kwa sochi hori hiko, ile hiko karibu. Mimi nilizikuta hizo. Usi niulize maswali. <laughs> Yo Friday, watu wameche, wameimba na huyo mama, alafu yule kiwete ya kaenda, haka muambia, huku, huku, huku. Bas, wakaimba, wakacheza nae. So it can happen every Friday wakienda kakijana kakisongea kana sema huku 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 until this lady got so mad about it and said one day when this guy said huku 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 the lady says huku 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 what 
David gets to that point. Guku, guku, guku. What? He rises up from the ground. He is not embarrassed by what people are saying. He dresses up to praise God. He goes into the temple, washes himself, praises God, then goes home to eat. And everybody is asking, when the child was sick, you are not eating. Now the child is dead. You have gone to eat. What is the story? David now for the first time remembers what God has said. The child had to die. He released the child. And then he said, where the child has gone, I will follow. But the child will not come back. I'm speaking to someone who need to rise up like David and say this thing is going to die. I'm not going to pursue it because God has said it. I want to agree with him. Remember, I started by saying, don't just have Jesus in your heart. Allow repentance to come into your heart. Allow repentance to come into your heart. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. I say again, if God has condemned it, if we want, you want to move on, you have to move out. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, move out. Come out from the ground. Move out from those things that God has already condemned. And allow God to do something for you. When kile kile tumeshikiria, hakuna kishaenda, ushafutwa, kubali umefutwa, futika. I say, biashara imeshindikana, kubali imeshindikana. Anza ingine. I say, alikuacha ndio, kubali. Wake up. Ati bado ni namusubiri nani? Hakuji ndugu, jipange. Dada, wefange, utafanguo. David akaamuka akajipaka mafuta akavaa nguo za sifa kumsifu Mungu aishie milele akakubali mtoto lazima afe i'm saying there must be a funeral service oh i don't know how we are going to do it but there must be a funeral service today sasa hapa ndio naonaga watu wa dini dini inakujaga hivi we kuna kitu unajua Mungu amesema kife na nataka uje hapa tukizike hapa na utakata wengine mtakata lakini wale watakuja hapa tutakizika hapa 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 na siju unagoja nini si unaona tena nimekwambia dini dini ni kali dini, dini inagoja kawimbo jasta zaya unagoja kawimbo na umesikia neno na ni lako. Unataka kudhudhuru kwa nini? If you know there is something you want to kill, get to this altar. Get to this altar right now in the name of the Lord. It is you, you know it. There are things that you have desired they have to die and God has said they have to die. Allow them to die in the name of the Lord. Wacha kuwa mtu wa dini. Hebu tuache udini. Hiyo dini dini na Yesu ni tofauti. Mimi nataka Yesu. Mimi nataka Yesu. Mimi nataka Yesu. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And if you hold on to this real pray release it. Let it die. Wacha ifie pale. Katika jina la Yesu. Alafu urudi ukakae chini. Yes, that's all I want you to do. Just come hold this rail and tell God, this is what I want you to destroy in my life. You have said it has to die. Let it die. Whatever it is, is it relationship? Is it business? Is it an issue of money? Is it some employment? Whatever it is, release it. Even if there are people that you are still holding, release them. Let them rest in peace. If they have gone, let them go. Tell God, it is this day I'm here and I'm having this memorial service because there is something I'm burying in this altar. And I will live here with the praise. I'm wearing the garment of praise as I live here in the name of Jesus. I want to dress myself up. I want to wash myself up. I want to dress up myself up. I want to come out of here with the garment of praise and repentance in my heart and the joy of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, every man, every woman, dear Father that has come because there are issues in their life that have to die. Lord God, we want to destroy them before you. We want to bury them with you. We agree it is time to release them 
And Father, from where I've been, in misery, being pitiful, being sorrowful, I'm rising. I am rising. And I want to tell everyone, I am rising like David did. I'm rising, I'm going to celebrate. I'm rising, I'm going to enjoy. I'm rising and walking towards that which God has said it as mine. In the name of Jesus, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And as we go back to our seats, we are going to have praise in this house like we have never had before. We are going to release our spirit to that God who hears praise, who hears praise of his people, and that God will restore us, will restore us and restore that which had been stolen, all the joy that has been stolen, that God is going to restore it back to us in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.